And uh, welcome back to Let's Suffer Together. My name's Suffer. Today we're doing something a little bit different. We're known for runs on this channel, but today we're bringing in members of the community. Priskip, how you doing, man? I'm doing fine. First person I knew to find the all potion. General, all round, top, undermined community dude. Really involved in the community, he's done a lot for it. And uh, how are you feeling to look for all the tears today, man? I'm excited to go through these things. It's yeah, these gonna perks be a lot, are... It's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, these perks are super interesting. The game itself is just phenomenal. Even in early access, the amount they've added to it, it's been just mind-blowing. Edwound, also, who legitimately has got over 100 mark himself as well. Me and Edwound have been trading in streaks. How are you feeling today, man? I'm feeling incredible. I am really looking forward to reviewing these and placing them in some rankings. Uh, arguing with you guys for <laughs> position... <laughs> It's gonna be good. It's gonna be good. Indeed, 135 relics. I don't think we're gonna get through them all today, but we can uh, get a good start on it. So, a few rules. Yeah. We are allowed to change the relics position whenever we want. This is a dynamic list. We're gonna be looking through all the relics and then comparing them. See how, if we change our mind later, we can always, you know, recalibrate our thinking due to other relics in the game. Because like, roguelike games are pretty much designed to be like that. You know, everything influences each other. Let's go on to the first relic. What we got? Brisk it with the Wayland's boots, man. The first, yeah, the first relic is, of course, the Wayland's boots. We'll be doing everything in accordance to the order that they appear in the journal and the order that they appear on the wiki. And the first relic is Wayland's boots. Now, this nifty little relic protects you from spikes. It also grants you an extra five percent speed. And what I really like about this thing is it completely nullifies all attacks from lurker enemies. The red lurkers in the gold mine, as well as the purple ones in the in caverns, and the green ones in halls. If you have Wayland's boots, they can't hurt you. That's one less thing to worry about in the room that you are currently fighting. Yeah, definitely. I mean, as far as like these boots, I think they're great. I think uh, the fact you got to remember they protect you from any form of spikes. So if there are spikes that come up from the ground or ones that are surrounding a chest, you can just wipe them out. Uh, with lurkers, is an awesome thing to do. It's a fairly inexpensive crafting cost, also. But you know how? I mean, what do you think, Suffer? What do you well, think about this guy? It's normally an early upgrade, isn't it? It gets thrown out there quite quickly. A lot of the boots do. Um, you might not always see their inherent value, like Prisket was saying with the spikes. It's only recently that I keep on, you know, remembering that because I don't have them personally unlocked. Um, in the newest save file, the oldest save file I had, most early access uh, things unlocked in the early days of early access, and boots were one of those. He wanted everything unlocked, you know, and got some good use out of them. But it's... Uh, Nothing special, I'm afraid to say. I would have to agree. This is one that if I have no choice, and it's free, I'll take it. But if it's something where I have a choice between two relics, this may end up being the, the loser in some cases. But it is protection. Uh, but ultimately, where do we th uh, where do we think this would be placed in in your tier ranking for yourself? It doesn't teach you how to dance. You know, you got to dance in roguelike <laughs> games. You got to dance out of the way of the enemy if you're not learning to do that with spikes with real dangerous things that you can avoid yeah. just by you know moving and being responsive to your hand hand eye coordination. It really, yeah. devalues that learning process. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, I personally enjoy these things because. For me, I've been getting a lot of bad luck lately in some of my Summoning Stone 70 plus runs where mm -hmm. I get three lurkers in a room in gold mine. I have no fortitude because it's literally the first floor. I'll get three of these guys with bats in a tiny, tiny little room in this, and well, I just get cheese grated. But if I, if I were to have these guys, I could just worry about the bats and then just worry about the, or just take out the lurkers later but like suffer said that inherently makes you a lazy player when you don't have to worry about certain damage sources 
So in the ranking that we've created, uh, okay. so this is where we're going to rank everything as we review and talk about these individual items. We'll then determine uh, one by one where we would individually place this on our ranking. Uh, can you explain what these ranking values actually mean? Specifically the P and the S. Everything else is kind of self-explanatory. Go for it, Pro yeah. Skip. It's your, uh, it's your chart, man. So the P tier, P stands for perfect. It's a relic. For us, a perfect relic would be something that always gives you an upside, doesn't have any downsides, and it's just all around, you always want to have this thing. The S tier is generally what you would see on most other tier lists where it is an exceptionally good relic to have. You, superior. Yeah, superior. Like, super. It's a type of relic that if it shows up, you are most likely always going to take. Uh, the other tiers, the A tiers, the B tiers, the C tiers, they're... they're well, they speak for themselves. The D tier would be the lowest thing that we would most likely put something if it doesn't actively harm you. The F tier we're pretty much reserving for any relic that will actively harm you in a certain way, which, well, we'll discuss those when we get to them. Yeah. So, Wayland's Boots, where are you going to put this one, Priska? I mean, I really like these things, but I know they're not the best. I would probably put them somewhere. I would probably put them somewhere in the Bs. I was thinking C's okay. to be honest, but my I mind would... went to D, and uh, I, mean, I could only <laughs> reach for a C when you said B. But I agree with what you're saying. That's the thing. So uh, I'm I'm available for compromise. Head wound. What do you think? So I think this. So for me, there is no downside beside having to take this relic and not having it have a use. But the fact is, it is protection. If you were offered it for free when a relic comes up, now you do have to craft it. Um, I would put this at a, at a B or a B minus because of it protective value against the now desyncing lurkers. Oh, they're, they're a pain. Uh... When you get three of them. It's, it's tough. Well, it brings up a valid point that some of this changed throughout the early access. All the spikers used to be in synchronization, and now they end up firing at you from different angles at different times. It's mad in maddening, you know? It's just, um, you are correct. I should unlock one and have the full boot collection. Uh, <laughs> Indeed. The, the ladies need their full boot collection. And, you get, and then you get that plus 20% extra speed. <laughs> that is true. Yeah. But I so, agree with Edwin, I'd probably put it somewhere either B, B. Minus. Since it's a dynamic list, yeah, I'll, I'll agree with you. I'll succeed. To... Let's put it, yeah, let's, let's sit it in the B minus for right now. Let's, let's see how we move forward. I can see why it's right. the head wound. All right, so next we're going to do with the galoshes. The boots <laughs> that no one <laughs> wants to take. <laughs> this is... Only okay, so there are two relics in the game that I have unlocked that I will put on the pedestal of shame to be hidden and never picked up again. Uh, this is one of them. Now, it does grant you a 5% speed boost, like in general, it does allow you to move at normal speed across any oil but it places oil on the ground whenever you <laughs> jump. It does not give you protection from fire. <laughs> so it could quickly destroy you. Plus, from what I'm seeing in the wiki, this is unlocked at the beginning of the game. Yeah, beautifully it's, sadistic. It's a, yeah, so, <sighs> it's, so besides it's, you know, the positive nature of the speed increase and the ability to walk around when there's oil about, th this does not do it for me. I won't forget Helios do Boots, man. It's part of the boot collection. I know it's an enforced boot collection, but... <laughs> yeah, that, hey, that is one thing. Uh, we will be addressing the, this in addition to... You know, when it's combined with lava boots, they do produce Helios boots, yes. Helios boots are their own separate item. That's right. So, we can't really rank with the basis of Helios boots, unfortunately. Yeah. I don't believe. 
Yeah. yeah. If if this was the only thing that a person had and they didn't have lava boots, we have to rank this as if that. Absolutely. Yes. It's the fairest way of doing it. You know, Helios boots get their representation later. And the dynamic leaderboard, you know, it might. My, my galoshes. You know? Yeah. yeah. So you, uh, I'm going to be honest right here. <laughs> I, I'm saying a D. Like, this is... For I would, me... I would agree with you on that one. For me, I don't... I hardly ever pick up the oil boots anymore. I used to I used to like them whenever I first unlocked the lava boots and got the combination Helios boots, which we'll talk about shortly enough. But as as on their own, they just tend to light me on fire. I'll, <laughs> like a red or a red glomp. It never gets old hearing and, it. And, yeah. Know, I mean, so yeah, I mean, this is one that I would avoid. So yeah. suffer. Where do you think? Where would you put this? Based on its own D, old A D. Yeah. yeah. I'd, I would only pick this thing up if I already had Lava Walker. You wouldn't even pick it yeah. up for a 5% speed boost. Nope. You just wouldn't. Because yeah. it's time for float boots, mate. Oh, the good old floaty boots. A favorite of a certain person at Discord. <laughs> and 5% uh, <five> <laughs> speed boost, part of the great boot collection you get with, when you buy R Undermine, you know. You get given these boots and you get to, you know, wander. The dangerous halls of the undermine with them. Uh, float boots are one of the better ones. You know, you get to float across any surface apart from spikes, apart from fire, apart from anything else that's dangerous, apart from pits. So, uh, it's all right. The five percent speed boost is pretty nice as well. Um, can buy. You can do some tricky things with them, like bypassing the halls of halls of din, um, and skip the boss fight against more. Nice. <laughs> so they've got use. Very early game. They can. Create a safe space where pits used to be. <laughs> you know, the most danger turns into sometimes the most safest. So float boots. You do us proud. Absolutely. Hey, Suffer. How many times have you fallen into the void? Oh, many times. <laughs> Too many times, in fact. It's uh, I, The thing is, the voice when you fall in the Undermine is so cool. Uh, it's just so kind of... I, ca I can't be mad, <laughs> you know? And it's... One of those things that you enjoy so much, well, I, but then you're in it so enraged at the same time as well. Suffer, I have to say that you said something in one of your videos, and it's hit home every single time I see these boots. If you are relying on these boots to survive, hmm. you're not playing Rogue Game League correctly. You are not learning the game like you should. These are... A safety net that you don't necessarily need. They take the place of other relics, which are are better in their class. But at the same time, if you get into a room that's small, where there's a gap between two sections, and there, the excuse me, the the oil monsters are or the oil slimes are coding both sides, so you can't jump across. This is the only way that you can make it across from one side to the other. Yeah. Down to my own argument. Float boots allow you to survive the early game better. Meaning you get more gold and resources, thus you unlock more and get better stuff. So, can we see it in the light that you, it's an automatic unlock that can help you progress earlier yes. in the game and derive benefit from that. But it gives you a lot of gold because it helps you survive and be cheesy. But we so the great thing about this, look at look at it in this light. Is there a negative? First skip. There, I really don't see much of a negative to the float boots. The only negative that I could see with this is sometimes while I'm playing, if I don't have the float boots, and say a bat or one of the flies or something that has projectiles is shooting something at me, and there's so many of them that I know I'm not going to be able to dodge it, or if I do jump out of the way, I'm jumping into some other danger. <laughs> Sometimes, if I don't have the Vertigo Curse, I'll jump in the pit. Because yes. pits in high summoning stones, the damage that you get from falling does not scale with the summoning stone, in my experience. Ultimate defensive strategy. So right. jump in the pit. Oh, if, I'm right. on if I'm in gold mine, sometimes I'll jump in the pit, because taking the 20 fall damage is a lot cheaper 
than taking about 100 or 150 from a bat. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. But, so suffer. Yeah. I want you to I want you to give you a shot. I give it a shot with this one. Mm. I like the yellow on it B plus. I think That's it's other spiky boots. I don't think it's an A. I just don't think it's that special. Yeah. Or, it's I would agree. Some of you take perfect you know, position. When you were on such a beautiful run and you just want to have that flow and it allows you to have that flow. You're not really using it for its effects, just getting away with murder and killing everything yeah. once you've got a nice build. But how about yeah. you? I really like these things because it allows me to be cheeky with lurkers. I agree with a B plus. I was thinking somewhere about B plus A minus, but I'll go with the group consensus of B plus for the flip boots. Oh, working but, in unison. Oh, yeah. Next Ooh. one are next relic are the lava walkers. Now, these are probably my favorite boots. These I always love to find these boots. They provide such great utility. They allow you to become or you become immune from fire on the ground however you you important to note you do not become immune to fire projectiles such as the traps and dungeon but like i said immunity to the fire on the ground these things will also spawn fire on the ground whenever you jump that fire can then be used to you can throw your pickaxe in it and you can light your enemies on fire to get passive damage on your enemies and in addition to that, you can also use it to cook food. There's so much utility with the Lava Walkers. And then in the recent update, the Golden Core update, in the fifth area, there is molten gold on the floor. Or in some of the floors. And the Lava Walkers will actually protect you from that. That has yeah. its ups and downs where you won't get molten you won't get gold for health, but it provides a nice sense of security in those floors, which are already quite dangerous. And it can yeah. also help you with uh, Selt. Or not Selt, uh, Seer. Selt and Seer. Yeah. Uh, yeah not so only that, you want to on fire. <laughs> one of the addition is in any type of rogue-like game, you're going to have secrets. Secret rooms, secret areas, secrets that you have to discover by lighting something. Well, if you don't have... A different relic which we will address later called uh salamander's tail lava boots is how you do that you jump up land on the ground put some fire back up a little bit throw your pickaxe through the fire to whatever you need to light bam secret discovered it's beautiful and it's the most beautiful yeah. set of boots i've ever seen a part of the boot collection and should be raised on a pedestal high up in the sky yeah i think of all of the normal boot relics that you have available, Waylands, Galoshes, Float Boots, Lava Boots. Mm -hmm. I would rank this one an A. An a. Yeah. I was thinking somewhere yeah, about something A. Something you never a. give up. Even if you've got, like Head Wound said, Salamander's Tail. Discussion coming later on that one. Um, but A, A minus. So A doesn't seem that far. Yeah, it's not a reach. I was thinking A A plus, and Hedwin said A. So I think I think our yeah. consensus. It may it come into it. consideration when we rate other things, but it's a perfect placement for it now. Yeah. yeah. It must be mentioned also with the lava boots. It does not protect you from jumping onto uh, flames, uh, the braziers. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, it doesn't, and it's uh, confusing, but you have to live with it. Hopefully, yep. you're not jumping on too many pedestals that are on fire. It will happen. Yeah. Next up, we have Helios boots. This is the synergy, the legendary rarity Ooh. of the combination of getting those nasty galoshes that no one wants <laughs> and the beautiful lava walkers this one allows you to place oil and fire at the same time on the ground and that fire lasts longer than if you were to put uh like get some oil jump in with the lava boots or even use the galoshes to place oil then throw uh, a fiery pickaxe through it or light somebody on fire so you're getting 
Uh, I think you get a longer splat or a larger splat area maybe from the landing, but I know that it's a extended length for fire that's burning in the oil itself. Is this something that I enjoy taking? Not necessarily. Is it useful for certain scenarios? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Does it unfortunately cause some lag if there's too <laughs> much of it? <laughs> too much fire. At this point in early access, yes, there is a little bit of lag associated with the amount of fire that this can actually generate. And the visibility, that's another downside, is that because of the number of artifacts on the screen from the burning flames all over the screen, it could make it harder to see. Yeah, I recently had a fight with Cell where I had the Helios boots, and it was on Summoning Stone 78. And that fight lasted a while, eight, uh, over eight and a half minutes. And by the time I defeated Selt, a, a little over half the room was on fire. <laughs> and Selt, Selt's body actually renders underneath the fire. So it was, quite tr it was a quite tricky situation. Luckily, I, had, I think I had one Cleo on me, so it made, the Selt, it made that fight a little easier. But it does it does it does create a lot of visual noise. Visual noise and roguelike games go together quite well. It, it makes for some <laughs> spicy moments and they're legendary for a reason. It may be a legendary pain in the ass, but they also, you know, can help you along <laughs> in burning everything and being cheeky if you get the nice little booties along with it. They work very well. Uh, all the boots in combination, because I think this is the last boot we're addressing, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, yeah it just kind of, they all come kind of come together and create a nice kind of collection of booty items yeah. all together, but the Helios boot. Um, are we taking the so, state of the current um, game in early access um, and holding that against yes, Helios I, boots? Are we doing that? Can we do that? Are I, th I, th I think we have for to. Doing that? <laughs> I think we have to. Um... In part. I mean, there's no other way that I could think of these boots besides in their current state of play. With that being said, mm -hmm. because you have to take the ugly galoshes in order to get these, yeah, I am going to actually put these... Well, I'm going to say C+. I mean, wow. I, I know. I was thinking B-. Change my mind. I was thinking around B minus. I was thinking between yeah. C and B, so naturally. Mm -hmm. I do like. I was thinking C, either C plus or B minus, but then I remembered that these things will really help you out with those darn lightning lights. I had a run <laughs> earlier today where I would just light. If there is a room with lightning lights, I would just light the entire room on fire. And just deal with them. And anything that helps me deal with the lightning mites always makes me smile. But yeah, I still don't think they're that great. So I'd probably put them. I'd, I'd put them at B minus. So I, I'm going to concede to this one because I just thought of something. Because the oil deters from things moving quickly. Yeah. Ah, even yeah, the enemy. With Helios boots, not only you're placing that oil, which slows everything down, but you're also playing placing fire, which is increasing the amount of damage that your enemy is passively taking. Yeah. B minus, I'm good with that. All right. They work in great theoretical combination. Mm -hmm. Now, a big, big kitchen knife for the butcher's cleaver. It's quite nice that healing in the game, you're going to want a lot of it because a lot of the RNG and the meta towards that and how you kind of exploit the game is based towards health. So being given more health is always quite nice. The Butcher's Cleaver, every time you kill an enemy, you have a chance to drop some medium rare steak. One of the lowest healing foods, well, the lowest healing food, until we get, you know, bread. Um... <laughs> It does not matter if the killing <laughs> blow was dealt with a throwing pickaxe or a melee swing. It combines later on, but irrelevant at the moment. Seasoned popcorn can duplicate the drop meat, drop meat, so it's got extra value. Um, it's common. You're going to find it quite a lot. It's automatically unlocked. So for anyone starting out the game, it's going to be 
one of your main sources of HP for anyone deeper into the game. There's larger meta concerns where you can use it to gain a lot of money as well with uh, certain combinations. So it uh, depends probably individually how much you like to mess with those alternate metas of com changing and transmuting relics all the time and how much you need health. But I like to chop some stuff up and get their food out of them. Get some heals. How about yeah. you? How about you guys? I like I like this relic. Anything that gives me more food equals more transmuting equals more opportunity to find really good stuff like rainbow kernels or all potions. Which, as part of the meta that I've developed of using spirit to help you get through the game, this thing helps facilitate that meta. But like I said, anything that gets you more health is always a good good thing in my book. Yeah, no, I would absolutely agree with food is going to be your your primary source of healing, not potions. So the more food that you can get onto the ground equals being able to heal out of a bad room of enemies, being able to further transmute items to get things that are going to make you more powerful in order to further your adventure allows you to do curse removal and then heal off of whatever has dropped from your enemies so there's a lot of benefit that can come from this so as far as a common relic that's available almost all the time i will absolutely take this this is one of my favorite as far as like uh, longevity for a run and when you unlock blessings that increase the hardiness of the food, i.e. how much health you gain from a piece of food. Man, this is like getting oh, riches yeah. all over the place. And then if you get the seasoned popcorn and you can get that food to duplicate, anytime you kill an enemy, you have the chance to get not only just one piece of food, but sometimes two, three, some, even four or five. The popcorn can really make this thing, sh or really make this thing shine. It's going to be popping off quite a bit, and then it will kind of shut off, maybe when you need it the most. So, yeah, maybe and... consider other sources of HP as well. Don't put your whole stock in Butcher's Cleaver, and you'll get pinched. Yeah. Indeed. There is... I, I only have one complaint about Butcher's Cleaver, and it has to do with a later relic that we'll discuss called Dirk's Hammer. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh... Yeah. Well, but we'll, but get, we'll get to that when we come to it. But it's, the, it's not the other side. It's more of a fall of dirt. <laughs> well, the also the other side is the um, the shield relic. Ah, yes, yes. The possibility of getting a replacement shield mm -hmm. instead of the food item. So, yeah. you know, it could go either way. Um, I'm going to go ahead and give this uh, a rank. So Butcher's Cleaver, because it has saved me <laughs> so many times, I'm actually going to give this an A. That's I'm... where I would put it. I would put it next to the Lava Boots. Oof. It is fundamental to a good run half the time. Half the time it's not. Hmm. You get your health sources from an abundance of places, and it's only a part of a greater whole. Um, I was thinking A-. Hmm. Well, we have two A's and an A minus, so because lava boots are to compare it already or actively yeah. prevent you from losing HP. This is allowing you to get hit a lot more, which can be favorable, but it's it's not, you know, so... making you survive. You know, I have that kind of innate feeling where if you feel like you've survived something because you've earned it, you kicked ass, you were on low HP, you got through that, yeah, badass feeling. But if you're just getting HP after HP after HP after every room, <laughs> I'm not saying it's you know, the relic is good, but it might provide a bad lesson by just oversupplying you with health sometimes. That is absolutely and true. You need to struggle. You need to strive. And, and often, like when, it, and this is going to be one of the things, everybody, that we're going to be dealing with is when we're placing a relic at a specific rank, take a look at what relics already exist at that rank and mentally ask yourself is the choice between lava boots and a butcher's cleaver? Is that a choice, and which one would you take over the other? This is I would honest, honestly, I would, I would say 
Lava Boots over Butcher's Cleaver. I would probably take Lava Boots. I would take Lava Boots. Yeah, I, I the agree. Ability of Lava Boots. So in in that case, I would concede to the A minus for Butcher's Cleaver. This is why having yeah, a dynamic leaderboard to... is so sensible in this regard that um, we're, we're not going to be right all the time. Compare it, especially when you're comparing other relics and allowing yeah, it to I'll, move I'll around. Agree, I'll agree to the A minus because I do think the Lava Boots would be better. The next relic on our list is the Keyblade, <laughs> the one and only. This bad boy here, he gives you two extra damage on your swing for every single key that you have. This mm. thing is amazing. This Dude. is, if you're not running Spirit and doing crazy potion shenanigans, if you're doing a quote-unquote normal run, you are always going to be looking for this thing. This relic is effectively the meta of this game. Just trying to get as many keys as possible to get as high a swing damage as possible is essential for pushing high summoning stones and undermine. I th I think this is one this of those thing, relics. I, I just can't say enough good things about it. Yeah. No, I, I would agree. I I would say this Go is one on. of the relics where because it is unlocked automatically with the game was one of the best decisions by the developers in enticing people with an item that they can consistently or more relatively uh, succeed in beating the game. With getting, now granted, you do have to hang on to as many keys as you could possibly have or get, and there is a maximum of only 99 keys that you can get, equating to 198 points of damage. But that amount of damage, anywhere up to, I mean, to be honest, up to 100 summoning stones, yeah. hmm. that is going to make the difference. There's no other single relic in the game, other than perhaps Doomblade that will give you that much damage. A cheap resource material as well. I know keys are not the mm -hmm. most common thing, but certainly there are ways of manipulating the game to your advantage, shall we say? And um, essentially, like mm -hmm. Brisket was saying, the meta of the game, um, if you want to get a hell, of, a hell of a lot of damage and secure your victory, that's what you'll be aiming towards every time. And hoping and beyond hope that it's early this time or you know you can secure it because sometimes it'll only come at the very last moment just before the final boss fight and it saves yeah, your ass because you've had that commitment to the keyblade um yeah yeah i remember yep. i Wonderful. remember quite a few times while watching your two's streams that this was before the golden core was added and ponzu was still the final boss that you would be on caverns four and you would have 99 keys, and you would be doing everything possible to try to make this thing show up. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. When it, when it comes down to it, when you're trying to beat that final boss, and you know that the amount of damage that you have with the current relic sets, with the current blessings, is going to make this fight incredibly long, and the longer that a boss fight is, the more chance that you are going to make a mistake this is the one that will bridge you over and also i don't see a negative to this besides the fact that you have to hold on more keys but mm -hmm. you know i don't see a negative the literally only negative is if you have zero keys and it's a dead relic but how often <laughs> are you at zero keys intentionally once you've got keyblade yeah um, yeah i've only the most beautiful I've only... Prisket? I've only had zero keys with this relic once, and it was in other mine, <laughs> where keys can sometimes be difficult to come by. So, Priskip. Yeah. Where are you gonna put it? Ah, uh, that's a that's a tough one. <laughs> that's it's, a tough one. It's either P or S. Um. Is it perfect? Okay. So I have an opinion, but I'm gonna let Suffer reply or oh. respond first. Like you're saying, it only has one downside. Yeah. Key drought. If you rely on getting it, though, some runs you'll be disappointed. 
Some runs it won't show up. Yeah. But that can we hold a relic not showing up and hold it against it for being perfect? Because hmm. we know another certain little thing that doesn't always show up, but when it does, it is perfect. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we know we know that. Mm -hmm. Um, oh yeah, it's gonna we'll happen to eventually. You'll see that smile. But <laughs> the preparation so it I... takes, yes, the preparation it takes to have Keyblade just be awesome. Yeah, it's not like it provides an immediate benefit most of the time. You need to you work. Have it. To, you have to work for it. The potions, yeah. the and... the other resources it takes from your run to pump it all into the Keyblade. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. The resource requirements and everything okay. else, it's an S. It's an S for me. Yeah. I would, it's I an would... amazing relic. Yeah. This thing is amazing. And like we're saying, the re like we said, the resources needed to get this thing to work. Usually, in order to get 99 key is a good strategy for that. There's two different ways that I know of getting 99 keys in this game. One is to use a bomb doubler potion when you already have a lot of bombs and then use the impish key bomb the second is from another cute little adorable relic that we'll get <laughs> to later <laughs> yeah yeah so yeah i think that's a great placement uh with that being said there's not next... much better than it um there's not much better yeah. than well the since you mentioned it <laughs> what, am I, what am i mentioning mass <laughs> better uh master's pickaxe it does Ooh. have a high crafting cost it is very rare in my opinion but it basically takes your regular swing and makes it into a fiery projectile well not fiery projectile it makes you into a projectile like this uh that projectile can cover the entire green without slowing well without being reduced as far as the damage it has no distance restriction it can go all the way across if it hits one of those prisms and caverns it can actually shatter into four uh different projectiles of itself this is one of my if if it came between keyblade and master's pickaxe that is a really tough choice. Ah, uh, I wouldn't. Know that is what to a do. that is a terrible, terrible choice that you would have to make. However, very situational. Um, do you have ninety nine keys, or do you have a little bit of cleave and want to extract double damage from it? Yeah. Also, you have a splitting off point yeah. where I think you'll know instinctively for the run you have which one you're going for. But requires full health to use. Yeah. That's the main yeah, yeah, that's um, that one. If you yeah. can't keep your full so, health, is it that uh, is that that perfect tier? No, no, no. Because it has a specific requirement around it. It's corruptible, uh, which is full health. If you don't have full health, this thing does nothing. But really the amount, the yeah, but the benefit that you get from dealing with bosses and the enemies in general being able to sit like all the way across on the other side of the screen and throwing a projectile that is just that's amazing to me oh yeah so uh, I would put this at an S I'd be very comfortable at putting it at an S oh I would put this at S one of the very few swing alterations you will ever find in the game superb oh fantastic relic Mjolnir. A little bit of a <laughs> hammer here, and we're coming into the territory of Shogul relics. And Priskip, do you, before I explain Mjolnir, do you want to explain the rules and regulations behind Shogul relics in the current tier list? Shogul, if, for those of you who haven't seen him in the game, because he can be pretty rare, Shogul is essentially Undermine's version of the devil. He will offer you two relics that have the potential to completely change your run it will most of these relics provide alternative play styles or just something extremely beneficial to you now that power comes at a cost for show for any relic that you find from shogul he will charge you curses 
to buy those items. So if you pick up a relic from Shogul, you are going to be cursed. Different, the different relics from Shogul will cost you different amounts of curses. Like, or for example, this one here, Mjolnir, takes two minor curses in order to get it. So for our tier list, we are going to consider, for Shogul relics, its effect on the run, how big of an impact can it have on your run, versus the cost that it takes to get it. There are certain Shogul relics that, in my opinion, just really aren't that worth it, because they their alternative playstyle is not very strong. But there are other Shogul relics that they could be 10 major curses, and I would most likely still pick them up, because they're just that good. Mjolnir, <laughs> which, uh, coincidentally, is Thorium Entertainment, the developers of Undermine's logo. A hammer comprised entirely of Thorium grants the power and wrath of the gods. Um, I think I was missold this hammer, to be honest. Um, I was expecting a legendary relic, and I didn't really get it off. <laughs> when you throw the pickaxe, yeah, when think... it returns, you get a little bit of an electric buzz around you, and it felt like it was misfiring. Yeah, you've been sold a bill of goods. Yeah. You yeah, might want to consider it in certain relic combinations, say doing a throw build, Phantasmal, Guidance, and Mjolnir, maybe? It's flashy, it feels cool. But, you know... Lightning damage does do a considerable amount of damage at low summoning stones, but it's nothing to write home about when you start getting into 50 plus. Well, two minor curses. Not too bad. It's it's really cheap. So cheap. It, yeah, two minor curses at high summoning stone levels. You're when you're usually finding talismans or curse removal potions in shops. It's really not that much. Missold, but it's, not actually that angry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, this thing, the best way to describe it is mediocre. It doesn't take too many curses to get, but it doesn't give you too much of a benefit. There's a few of the benefits yeah. there, uh, but it doesn't electrify water. Big plus. I, I did not know that. A head wound. Well, yeah, this is one where if I get the uh, Shogul's Lair, I look at it and go, oh, hey, that looks really cool. What is that one again? You know why? Because it's one of those that I never take, and I have to read it to figure out, oh, this was that one. Oh, yeah, no, I'll skip it. <laughs> I mean, to be honest, if this was listed as one minor curse, I may actually pick it up. But two minor curses, plus not understanding the amount of damage that it may potentially do um yeah i i'm i'm sorry i'm gonna put this at a c minus yeah for me what really what's really bad about this particular relic is that in order for the lightning damage that it does when you when it returns to you you have to be standing near enemies and if you're standing near enemies they can do damage to you it's Quite a tricky predicament. Dangerous world. Ooh, Don't take the hammer you with know you. what? <laughs> I'm it's sorry. Heavy with... And it has too much of a burden when there's probably <sighs> something else on the Shogul rack that you want. You know what? I, I'm actually going to change my opinion. I'm going to make this a D. Oof. I probably would feel comfortable putting it there too. You see, I would, I would I say agree. C it's minus definitely... C, but I will it's definitely somewhere let here. the rankings grow. I'll, I might personally well, come back to that one. So you know what? When we think, okay, so let's think about this. Which one do you, would you rather take? Would you rather take the two curses and the Milner, or would you rather take the Galoshes? Oh, Milner every day. I'd <laughs> rather have five because curses these... rather than the Galoshes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, actually, five minor is. curses. I would. Yeah. If as long as they attempted to be at least a little bit different curses if it was one stacked curse of five say receive more damage you're not gonna be too happy and you probably would have took the galoshes but it is two minor curses for yeah. something that doesn't actually ever hurt you you don't have to use it it's always just you can use it in your passive play so i think it's got merit but it's let down by being shogul yeah yeah like if this was a if this was a not a shogul relic just one that you can naturally find in the relic pool I would feel like this would be pretty good. I'd probably bump it to somewhere near the Wayland's Boots because it's just extra passive damage. 
No flash sure. and no real spark. And the fact I did not know that it doesn't affect water. Yeah, that can we make it not useful know for that. mortar. That can make so, it very useful for the mortar fight. The blast radius is surprisingly right. large. Mm -hmm. That will do it for this video. And the next right. in the next video, we'll so, be coming across um, one of the other high damaging relics that you can get. But this one comes with a big twist. We'll see you then. Hey, it's been a nice little uh, run through. Well, it's been productive. The list will grow. Yep. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Priscip. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Headwound. Appreciate you guys for joining Absolutely. us today. Absolutely. Oh, it's been a blast. Again, this list is going to grow. Oh, yeah. Thank you so much for watching. I've been Suffer of Let's Suffer Together. Make sure you're checking out Headwound's channel, uh, twitch.tv forward slash Headwound. YouTube as well. You'll find his mm -hmm. content there. Again, if you like my content with the high summoning stones, He's, he matches me toe-to-toe, -to -toe, you know, so it's mm -hmm. a pleasure to have him in the community. And yeah. we'll explore, again, another Shogul relic and many other relics. But thank you for joining us today. Always feel free to like, share, subscribe to the content. Much love having you here, Priscip. But until next time, yep. my friends, you take it easy. Take care of yourselves, and I'll catch you in the next tier list. See you later, guys. See Bye. you next time.